Here's one of the most important, one of the most fundamental things that you gotta know about topology in Blender if you want to get good at 3D modeling. People ask me this shit all the time. You gotta know this if you're serious about 3D modeling, okay? The question I get all the time is, Aryan, what's the difference between using creases to sharpen your edges, to sharpen your surfaces, versus using a bevel to sharpen an edge? And the difference is huge, and it's really important that you understand the difference between how these tools work and why one is different from the other. So, for example, we're going to take a look at this chair that I've made for this car right here, but really you can do this at any part where you want to sharpen something. Maybe we can take the hood of this vehicle as well. Fuck it, let's do the chair for now, just because it's going to be a little bit easier to understand. So we have this edge here, which we want to sharpen. Now, there's two ways that you can sharpen this. Of course, this surface is under the influence of a subdivision surface modifier. There's two ways for you to sharpen this. One way is to select that entire edge. Okay, and let me activate my screencast keys just so you guys can see what I'm pressing just in case. One way is to add a mean crease or to set the mean crease value to something. So we select this entire edge, we press N, we open up the item menu on the side. You're gonna find mean crease down here. You're gonna turn that shit up, okay? And you'll notice that now, that reshapes the geometry, so now it becomes very sharp, even though it's still under the influence of a subdivision surface modifier. So maybe I can reduce the influence, or maybe I can reduce the subdivision levels, and then I can reduce the strength of the crease, and you can see what this does to your geometry. So pay attention, look onto this corner over here, all right? So but without a crease, we have this sharp corner here, and because of the subdivision surface modifier, it turns into a round corner, all right? But as we increase the crease value, okay, you can see that it becomes sharper, so it takes this edge segment here, which is directly underneath the one which we have selected on our mesh, that one moves closer to the edge which we have selected, and as a result, the geometry around it also moves closer, so that just becomes a sharp corner, it's almost like we're excluding this from being influenced by the subdivision surface modifier, okay? And we just turn it into a sharp corner, alright? But, when you add a bevel, which is my personal favorite and recommended way to sharpen your geometry, something completely different happens. Because when you add a bevel, so let me just show you this one more time. Just remember what this looks like, okay? Remember this. We're transforming the mesh. But when we add a bevel instead of a crease, so I usually add bevels with Control B. I add a bevel like this, and down here, I set the profile shape to 1, and I use two segments, all right? And a lot of times you also want to check whether it looks better with loop slide or without loop slide. I don't want to get into it right now, but you can see that the way that the bevel is formed looks and works a little bit differently with or without loop slide. In this case, we're going to use loop slide anyway. That, that doesn't really matter too much, but this is what happens when you add a bevel. So let's undo this real quick, and we're going to add a bevel again, Control B. You're going to see that something different happens when you add it. But what happens when you add a bevel is we're adding new geometry. So that's technically the same as adding a loop cut onto this side and also another loop cut onto this side. So what we're doing is we're adding new geometry. That new geometry is being subdivided because of the subdivision surface modifier. And then we're bringing that geometry very close to the edge to tighten up the corner which needs to be rounded because the rounding only works between the nearest edges. Let's say it still goes beyond them, but barely, okay? So we're adding new geometry and we're bringing it very close. Now, here's what happens when you use the crease, all right? When you use a crease, let's say we select this edge and we add a mean crease value. We set that to one. And then let's say we want to increase this a little bit and we want to apply our subdivision surface modifier. Object, shade smooth. We're gonna apply this. Well, we don't even have to apply it, but you can see that when we go to object, shade smooth, the edge here looks a little bit fucked up, okay? It looks a little bit jagged. You can see we have this shading spilling out here. Then it gets tighter again. It works fine down here, but over here we have something weird going on. And the reason for that is the flow of the geometry, the flow of the faces around this edge, all right? In particular, this is something that I talked about in my uh, Blender Pro Tips ebook in the topology section, okay? I broke down why this type of shit happens. So in this case, one of the problems is we have a pole here on the edge which we're sharpening and the pole has more than four edges connecting into that vertex, okay? So this is a vertex with more than four edges around it. And that's unhealthy, that's bad topology. Well, it's not necessarily bad topology, but it's not always good. So in this case, it's causing us big problems. We wanna avoid having poles on corners or on round surfaces like this. If we're gonna have a pole, it can be somewhere on the inside away from this corner, okay? See, if we have a vertex which has only four edges connecting into it like this, that's fine. That behaves exactly the way we want it to behave. But as soon as we have five edges, you can see that now it gets all fucked up. It behaves in a way that we don't want it to behave. So we want to avoid having this pole. So we don't want to add a crease here because that brings a pole here. What we do instead is we add a bevel with control B, all right? 
two segment profile shape 1.000 and then we separate this so we add a new sort of segment between the sharp edge and the pole so now the pole is on this edge and that is not the edge on the corner itself that's one edge further to the back and as a result because of that if we go object shade smooth now you cannot really see that imperfection anymore okay it's much more hidden it's much less visible than it was before this is why we use bevels this is why i use bevels mean crease doesn't usually work too well because it causes this sort of, this kind of problems now a lot of people always also ask me Aryan, why do you add bevels manually and a lot of times let me undo this shit. hold on a second a lot of people always ask me Aryan, why do you add your bevels manually instead of using the bevel modifier and I'll show you why. And what they're talking about is this. You don't have to add your bevels manually with control B because you can see that sometimes it's hard to undo them. You saw that I was just trying to clean it up. I had to undo it. Imagine if I would have done another 600 steps and then I decided I don't want that fucking bevel anymore. I can't undo it anymore. So it becomes surgery if you want to get rid of it. So instead, what you do is you use a modifier and then it makes the bevel, but it doesn't apply it to the geometry. So you can, you can just turn off the modifier at any point and you go back to before you had the bevel. Here's how you do that. So you select this edge segment here. We don't want no crease. We don't want no bevel. Instead, in this menu, we set the mean bevel weight to one. And that doesn't do anything yet. But if we go over to the modifier stack, add modifier, generate, and we're going to go to the bevel section, we need to place that bevel modifier above the subdivision surface modifier because first, we want to apply the bevel, we want to create the bevel, and then we want to subdivide that new geometry after it's already influenced by the bevel. So now, in the bevel here, we're going to make some adjustments. So by default, it just takes any angle above um, 30 degrees here, or whatever the fuck that means, radians or whatever the mathematics calculation is. It takes all those angles, edges, and it bevels them. It creates a bevel on some edges. Now, that's a pretty random way of doing it. That's not really clear. We only want it to bevel edges, which we marked with a bevel where we added some bevel weight so instead the limit method is not going to be angle here we want to set that to weight okay so now it only adds a bevel to the edges where we set the bevel weight to whatever so in this case this entire edge here now you can't really see it because it's just one segment but if we change this to two segments if we change the profile here to one to sharpen it well now there's a bevel maybe we can also bring it a little bit closer because now it's pretty wide so we're going to reduce this from 0.1 to something like I don't know, 0 0.01 instead. You can see now it looks like it's behaving like it was when we added a bevel here. So it's the same as if we would have actually added a bevel here, except, well, there's no bevel. The geometry is still simple as it was before. And if we want to get rid of this bevel for whatever reason, we can just either turn this off so we can't see it, or we can get rid of it, and then we're not going to have the fucking bevel there anymore. So that's no problem. So that's the difference between using a bevel manually, between using a mean crease, or setting the crease value to whatever, and using a bevel in the bevel modifier, all right? So those are very important differences. You guys got to understand that shit. If you guys uh, got any questions about this, let me know in the comments. I can make another video to answer some of your questions. If you guys want to see more tips like this, then check out my Blender Pro Tips ebook. It's like 400 fucking pages of everything that I learned about Blender in my 10 years, all the tools and techniques that I've ever encountered in my 10 years of doing this shit, okay? So if you guys want to learn a bunch of tips and tricks about how this shit works, how the topology works, all the tools and modifiers and all the different things you see me use in my videos for creating all the stuff I create. Go check that out. I got a little holiday discount right now. Anyway, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you want to see next. I'll see you in the next one.